this man just might be the next UFC lightweight champion. Welcome to the Australian MMA podcast. We cover, of course, Australians in the UFC, uh, Australians in MMA in this country, and the transitional period from regional to the worldwide scene. And this man is doing just that as uh, breaking news today. Uh, Quillen Southfield announced that he was signed on for Dana White Contender Series where he will compete later this year for a UFC contract. Now, Quillen Southfield is Australian MMA's 2023 Fighter of the Year and he is an eternal MMA lightweight champion who uh, just... I feel like consensus number one of who we thought was going to get signed next and uh, he's very much close to that. Uh, Dana White Contender Series, if you don't know... Basically like a job interview, you do really well, you pick up a UFC contract in front of the big old boss man, Dana White himself. So, as the news broke, of course, we had to reach out to Quillen Southfield and get him on the show to just talk about the lead up and how it's affected his family who supported him uh, this whole time. Uh, And he even makes a little prediction on not if, but when we will see Quillen Southfield as a UFC champion. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Quill and Southfield. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the show. A very uh, special guest uh, at a very special time, Quill and Southfield. Mate, welcome. Hello, Mitchell. How's it going? Mate, you have nearly made it again. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One step up more this time. Yeah. I mean, ironically, we're talking uh, as Road to UFC is going on uh that was the closest you got last time but where you're basically kind of uh, putting on a display if they liked you i guess maybe it got you closer to a ufc contract but it was still under the ufc banner um that fight unfortunately didn't happen because uh your opponent got pulled got moved to another fight you got just handballed back to the australian mma which we love uh, a few fights later, we see you at Dana White uh, Contender Series. You've now been signed to appear later on in the year, which everyone knows if you put on a good display, of course, if you win, but if you put on a good display, you could end up with a UFC contract. Um, how does it feel, mate? Man, I'm over the moon. Words can't explain. This is this is like the closest I've come to dream, dream coming true. Now, of course, you... You wouldn't be happy if it all ended here, would you? Not at all, man. Not at all. And it's not going to. I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back to the local scene. <laughs> as much as I loved it, I'm not coming back. Well, no one is actually more deserving. Um, you had a stellar year in 2023. You continued it in 2024. Uh, for people that don't know, Dana White Contender Series, like we've mentioned before, I think Jack Jenkins even said it's, it's like – the world's most tense job interview. You're basically fighting someone else who's not in the UFC in front of Dana White. And basically, regardless of the result, uh, he decides if he wants to give you a contract or not. Mm. And Yeah, this is going to be a tough thing, but uh, I know I'm going to shine under that pressure. Is it... I'll ask you this. Do you like going through the Dana White Contender Series, uh, would you have liked to have gone through Road to UFC, maybe the Ultimate Fighter, or just signed straight up? What would have been the preference? Preference would have been, uh, number one would have been getting on the Perth card coming up straight away. That would have been obviously the best thing. But I'm very happy with Contender Series. Like This is how I see myself getting into the UFC from the past you know, few years. I've always pictured it ending up this way, going through the contender series to get my contract. It does kind of feel like a launching pad as well. Of course, we've seen Jack Della, Jack Jenkins, uh, Jimmy Crute, uh, Mm -hmm. a lot of guys like that. A lot of Australians come through. Tommy Nolan recently, um, who also picked up a victory today. Um, Unfortunately, we never got to see you guys meet. Um, But he went through that way. Um, Do you feel like, you know, once, once that fight happens, the world will know who you are? I think so. I think so. Very confident in that. Is it getting ready for this fight? Um, do you do you have an? I'm assuming legally you have to know your opponent. Yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> do, you know, do you know? Do you know your date? Yes. Can you share any of them? I can't share that after. 
when the boss lady tells me I can share it, I'll share it. <laughs> now, we've, <laughs> we've, she says that at the moment. <laughs> yeah. um, the UFC is normally very um, tight-lipped with this sort of stuff. Um, yeah. How come you guys were allowed to announce it? We're allowed to announce that it's happening, just can't disclose um, an opponent or a date. And is it the fight for people that don't know the, is the fight live? It's not like the ultimate fighter where it's filmed and then comes out later. I'm pretty sure it's live. Yeah. Just awesome. like normal. Um, and we've talked about your, your, your manager, uh, jazz before and, and addict sports and whatnot. Um, yeah, she took a chance on you, but I feel more that you took a chance on her. She was an unproven manager. She was a hell of a photographer. Obviously she's worked with, um, eternal and stuff before, but she was an unproven manager when you have so many other great managers around that could have, you know, maybe promised you the UFC and you stuck with her. Why? Mainly because I trust her and, and uh, she really cares for me as well as the, you know, the other people like Annie and Cody that, that um all part of the team. Um, we're like, I feel like it's like we're her children you know, in a way. <laughs> So just that knowing that she truly does care for us, she's always going to do what's best for us. And did she ever go, don't worry, Quill, I'll get you the UFC. Don't worry. This is what I'm doing. Like, did you ever have to ask her like, Hey, are you emailing them? Do you even have their emails? Like, how did you put your trust in this person to get your dream? And she's crazy. I think I know she's, she's pushing hard for, for all of us. Um, Yeah. I put total faith in her and then, yeah, she's, She's got me to where I need to be. Now, mate, you basically have been, I mean, there's a lot of guys on, on the on the cusp, of course, uh, all the flyweight, Sean Gautzi, Drillich, Stewie Nickel, Ben Johnston in the, the eternal middleweight champion, uh, Harry Webb in the lightweight division. He's like got some, there's so many guys that are coming up. There's so many people that are mad at me that I didn't say their name just then. But there's so many guys that will like basically uh, right on the doorstep. But I feel like it was a real consensus that you were the next in line did you feel like that was the case i did i did i knew especially after that road to ufc um thing i knew that just within a couple more fights after that that i'm i'm right there knocking on the door how does it feel to follow in the footsteps of guys that were not just like good fighters in in eternal mma and and, and good champions but like a steve ersig and a Jack Della who also defended their belt multiple times in Eternal MMA. They basically became the face of Eternal MMA. And then not only did they get to the UFC, but what they have done in the UFC, I mean, Jack Della's probably a couple of fights away from a title shot and Steven Ersig just got one. Um, does that fill you with a lot of motivation? Yeah, of course, man. Like Australian MMA is really high level at the moment. Like I watch a fair bit of, you know, MMA in terms of, you know, other countries, local shows, and just watching them really, you know, I really get to appreciate how high level we are in Oz, you know, especially in Perth, you know, Perth's on top at the moment. Was it important to get a turn I mean, I don't know the, the, the back end chats, but was it important for you to get some of those international like sort of fights coming in and, and those, those opportunities to sort of get you ready for this? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a good, say like practice for fighting international guys and for the australian mma community are you i mean you said you're not coming back because i mean we all know you're going to win you're going to win well but are you still the eternal mma champion i think as of right now yeah i haven't heard anything otherwise and let's i uh, oh mean i can't even ask this question but i have to let's say hypothetically you, you win let's say you win you win you smash him, see? I won't, I won't make you angry. But you, for some reason, you don't get a contract. I don't know. Dana White doesn't have a pen. He can't give it to you, right? Do you still come back to Eternal and then and then continue on? I'm not sure. I haven't thought that far ahead, man. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I've only thought about getting that contract. So I'm going to go in there and, and give it my all. How long have you known for? I've heard whispers for a few months now. So <laughs> end of February, I heard, couple of whispers, but officially for one week now. Did it make you want to not, if you heard whispers since February, did it make you want to not take any fights in the interim or did you just have to pretend like you weren't hearing it? Uh, pretty much because I, I knew any day that, 
you know, going to get an email, get the call up. So it was hard dealing with, yeah, with all that. And then, you know, after, after a month or so, I starting, I was starting to get very itchy and wanting to get back in there. So even now it's going to be, you know, still like a fair while away. So, and I have to try to deal with the, with the itchiness. Uh, can I ask that? Cause you're, you're known as, as a guy that, Cam O'Neill, promoter of Eternal MMA, has said you have never turned down a fight. Does that mean you had to turn down fights in this interim? No, I haven't turned down fights, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. And, mate, how um, stoked are your parents? Um, I mean, they are probably broke supporting your MMA career and it's nearly it's nearly <laughs> there to, it's nearly there to pay <laughs> off. <laughs> how stoked are they? Man, they're over the moon. It was good because I was... I was actually visiting them on uh found out on Mother's Day, so I was visiting my mum, and it was a great surprise. I got to go outside, spoke to Jazz. She uh yeah called me up, gave me the news that we're on, and I got to go inside and tell all mum and dad, and then they were you know jumping all over the place. So it was it was like a, it was a good Mother's Day gift for mum as well. Mate, that's that's so good. And uh, your your teammates, of course, uh. Another Australian champion, Cody Harden. You mentioned him earlier. Uh, he's on a similar quest. Um, how does it feel when a, a guy like that finds out? I mean, he obviously wants the same thing as you. Is it is it awkward or is he just super pumped for you? I think he's gonna be super pumped for me, man. Yeah, it's gonna be super he, pumped. He's does gonna he not know? his time's gonna come very soon as well. Does he not know yet? <laughs> he does now. Yeah, <laughs> I've had to keep it a secret from it. Man, I've had to keep this secret from the gym. Everyone's asking me, what do I have coming up next? Do I have anything coming up? And I just had to say, don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I've had to lie to everyone at the gym. I have to apologize oh. now to everybody. Oh, geez. All right. Well, mate, um, we'll probably have a have a chat closer to your fight. But yeah. what do you kind of want to say to anyone that sort of followed your, your career since the very start and uh, anyone that has sort of maybe backed you from the beginning, maybe even guys that gave you, you know, 2023 20, fighter of the year, anyone like that, that you just really want to thank for helping you <laughs> get to this level. I want to thank everyone for their support and uh, just keep on supporting because you know, that my time's going to come and I'm going to make everybody, everybody going to be proud. Will you be, will we see Quillen Southfield as a UFC champion? You will. I get myself, Five years in the company, and I think I'll get there. Oof. I'm very positive with that, that time frame, actually. When I'm 30 years old, I'll be UFC lightweight champion. <laughs> I love it, mate. Man, yeah, this, is the, this is the first prediction right here. <laughs> Look back on this interview in, in a five, six years' time. 2030. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know I'm locking it in, brother. You're the absolute best. Uh, no one deserves it more. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, we'll chat again soon.